I do not think I am alone in my thinking when I say that the Shadow of the Earth Tree is extremely difficult, especially in the early hours of the DLC. The bosses hit really hard, you take a lot of damage, and rolling seems to just not be as effective. But there are a few things that you can do to make your life a little easier and give yourself a better chance at beating the early game. I'm Bonfire and these are four talismans that I would absolutely recommend you go get early on in your playthrough of the Shadow of the Earth Tree. Early on in my playthrough, I found myself getting absolutely blasted by spells of all different kinds. That being said, the Spell Drake Talisman Plus 3 is one that you absolutely want to get. Head to the Gravesite Plains Site of Grace and just make your way underneath the bridge. You'll find some spooky bats that scream at you, yell at you, and try to kill you. But don't worry about them. Just run past them or kill them once the bats have been dealt with or just run past Look to your left side of the cliff and you will see a gap. Jump across the gap and there is a doorway. Head through the doorway and the only item in here is the Spelldrake Talisman Plus 3, which boosts your magic defense by a massive, massive amount and is very, very useful against any magic dealing enemies or bosses. In a very similar vein to the last talisman, I found myself getting absolutely annihilated by fire early on in the DLC. There's lots of people wielding Mesmer's fire as well as just regular fire. That being said, you're going to want to make your way to the Fort of Reprimand so that you can pick yourself up the Flame Drake Talisman plus three. There are actually two different ways to get to this fort. I actually stumbled upon the rear entrance by accident when just exploring a clouded over area that I didn't have a map to but you can also go in the front, which is the North Highway Site of Grace. Once you've entered the courtyard, you'll see a horned warrior in front of you. If you have a heavy poise damage weapon, you can actually deal with him pretty easily because you can kind of just stun lock him, crit him, stun lock him, crit him, deal with him, or just run past him, your choice. On the right side of the courtyard, you will see a stairway leading down. Go down the stairway and you will see another door on your left. Go through it into a room with chains. It's bloody it's gross don't worry about it run through and make your way into the next room you will see three guards well actually technically two guards in front of you but a third one will ambush you with a big old spear take them out and you will find a secret hidden path in amongst a bunch of cages jump through the path jump through the cages and you will see a chest which inside has the flame drake talisman plus three which will give you much much needed flame resistance I feel like a common theme and meme in Elden Ring and pretty much any Souls game is people getting one-shotted by bosses or in PvP and not being able to figure out why. They're like, oh my gosh, I can't figure out. This boss is too hard. Oh my gosh, help me, help me. Well, usually it's because people have like 20 vigor and they just kind of get one shot. Well, if you're one of those people that likes to run a glass cannon build with 20 vigor or less or just need a little extra something something, I've got the talisman for you. Now, a little disclaimer about this one, uh, it is a little harder to get. The boss you have to kill to get it is challenging, especially early on, but I believe in you, you can do it. I did it, you can do it. Make your way to the Fog Rift Catacombs, and once you are through the catacombs, you will fight a Death Knight. He is a dual axe wielding maniac with lightning attacks. Also, if he grabs you at any point, he basically does a sweet anime move where he lifts you up in the air and heals off you it's super annoying but looks awesome don't get hit by it but once you kill him you not only will you get his weapons but you will get the crimson amber medallion plus three which boosts your health by a whopping 10 percent now that might not seem like a lot but in the heat of battle every single bit of health counts so this has been very very helpful for me Last but certainly not least, we have a talisman for those of you beefcake, dummy thick tanks out there. It is one that makes it so that the heavier you are, the more dummy thick you are, the bigger your defensive number is. That is the Verticus Discus. To get this one, you need to head to the High Road Cross side of Grace and make your way southwest from there. You'll see an island with an inactive teleporter and stone imps next to it. You will need an imbued sword key to activate this so if you do not have one there is plenty of them in the base game as well as a few in the shadow of the earth tree dlc head through this teleporter once you've made your way through and loaded on the other side you will be attacked by a divine bird warrior kill it 
end its life. Or just run past it. You don't need to kill it for this talisman. But I killed it. It was fun. A challenging fight. Make your way past it. And at the very, very end of this little arena, you will see a crumbling statue. Pick up the item at the base of the statue and you will be rewarded with the Verticus Discus. There you have it for all you beefy, beefy, dummy, thick tanks out there. Enjoy being beefier. Well, there you have it. Those are four talismans that were extremely helpful for me early on in the DLC, and I hope they are helpful for you. If you found this helpful, be sure to subscribe because I am always uploading new tips, tricks, and other Elden Ring related videos. The last one was a rant about my least favorite boss in the whole DLC. Go check it out. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace.